all year, the real estate investment trusts have been tossed back and forth like a football, going down when people get worried about the Fed raising rates, going back up when the rate hikes fail to materialize. It's true that the REITs are high-yielding stocks that often trade like bond market equivalents, but I think it's crazy to think about this entire sector as nothing more than hostage to the Fed. Take EPR properties, and that's symbol as EPR, a diversified real estate investment trust that owns entertainment, recreation, education-related properties. Think megaplex, movie theaters, retail centers, ski parks, water parks, golf complexes, charter schools. Here's a stock that basically it's flat for the year, even though it give you a bountiful 6.3% yield, a lot better than treasuries. Now, EPR just reported a solid, better-than-expected quarter last week and raised its full-year guidance for 2015, their fourth strong quarter in a row. Yet the stock barely budged. This could be a mistake. Is this a high-quality company that's just being overlooked because people are too terrified of what the Fed's going to do? Let's take a closer look with Greg Silvers, the president and CEO of EPR Properties. Learn more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Silvers, welcome to Mad Money. Thank Good you. to see you, sir. Have nice a seat. Nice to be here. Thank you. Well, maybe you can help me with the conundrum because I look at your diversified uh, properties. I look at about the fact that I don't think you've ever had anyone default on you. No. And I'm thinking that, therefore, the yield, that's how I judge how, the, how safe the yield is and the growth. And it just seems like that people just say, okay, EPR, that's a bond market equivalent. Don't think about the fact that you're really kind of apart from a lot of the others. I, I think so. I think we have a very unique model that we're able to grow. As you saw, our two, six, 2016 guidance, we, we upped earnings guidance for 2016 by 7.5%, spending guidance by nearly 20%. So we still have a, a very repeatable model that allows us to access our product, grow the company, even in a rising interest rate environment, and deliver a safe, stable, reliable dividend that we pay monthly. Okay, so let's talk about something so people understand. Mm -hmm. but let's take one that people might know, Top Golf. Yes. Now, this is a business. Uh, a lot of people feel that golf is kind of not really growing or anything, mm -hmm. but your end of it is. Exactly. This is actually kind of the juxtaposition of traditional Lynx golf. You know, what are the three major problems that people deal with that? The, the time commitment, four right. to five hours, the cost, and regrettably, the skill level. Right. And so uh, uh, this is a concept uh, where it combines technology and golf in a driving range with a microchip in it, with an overlay of food and beverage, high social interaction, high content driven, and it's a great time, approachable by people of all ages. It's 47% women are, are the yeah. attendees. So this, they've got a very big corporate and group event business, and it's been incredibly successful everywhere we've introduced it with them. Okay, uh, since the time we, we talked to your company last, there was a, a kind of a uh, open-ended optionality about a casino property. Mm -hmm. That looks like it's worked out and that the actual, uh, you get the upside, I don't see the downside. Right, for us, what we've done is we've structured that deal as a ground lease. Right. We're not necessarily going to participate in the, the cost of building the casino, but we'll have a percentage rent or a participating interest in the performance of it. So without, without introducing new capital requirements, we are activating what was a dormant asset for us. And so we, as we talked about on our call, we see this as a 15 to 20 cent positive as we go forward. Now, uh, charter schools, a lot of people don't know, this is still a big movement in our country, Absolutely. right? Republican or Democrat, doesn't matter. Absolutely. So that stays strong. Megaplex theaters do I have to worry about blockbuster versus non-blockbuster I can just people just go and it's a steady revenue stream right very much so what we're seeing this year we're we're up over six percent it looks like we're going to set a record all time over 11 billion dollars attendance is up six percent we're really seeing a renaissance right now with the high amenity theaters, with the, the new luxury seating and the right. introduction of expanded food and beverage. So right now, as we've said, our underlying tenant businesses have never been stronger. Now, why do you think there are not more companies that have this pastiche? Because I like the fact that it's balanced over many different, mm -hmm. you know, you use the rubric entertainment properties, mm -hmm. school and entertainment. Right. So why aren't there more? Because I always find that when I explain to people, and I have a lot of people, by the way, who bought the stock, mm -hmm. um, they either get it or they just think that's just too bizarre mm -hmm. because they don't know of five others that are like EPR. Right. Well, I, I think in the REIT world, most people focus on a single property type. You're an office REIT. Right. You're a multifamily REIT. You're a retail REIT. I, I think for us, being in the, in the specialty, having the nice balance between multi-sectors gives us the, the counter-cyclical from consumer discretionary with kind of the government pay of public charter schools. It gives us a nice balance. It's what we like, and we think it delivers the kind of results that, that we think we, uh, we've enjoyed for 18 years. Well, it clearly has, because there'll be times when I'll be speaking to a retail read and, and someone will be saying Amazon's killing them, and they all go down, which is not true. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, Deb Cafaro, who's 
so fabulous. Absolutely. And people are saying, Jim, you're wrong. Senior assisted living, not good. Sometimes you just you kind of want the mosaic. Yes. Because then you don't feel like that you're just being weighed down. Uh, people, are therefore, should presume with all the, the good news that uh, that there could be increased distributions in 2016? Absolutely. If you think about what we've done, our dividend has averaged a 7% increase over the last five years, every year. So we, we would anticipate that we would grow our, our dividend and rate with our earnings increase. Fantastic. All right. Well, look, it's great to meet you. I've talked to your predecessor yeah. before. This has been a big win for us because we've been behind it for a long time. That's Greg Silver's president and CEO of EPR Properties. Really transparent company. Great deck. You can find out everything that I have that I went over, and I think you'll like it. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.